Welcome back to Destroyer 1320. Today we're going to go over some tips for anybody who is a new owner of a 1320 Dodge Challenger. Stay tuned. So here is my 2019 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack 1320. Destroyer Gray. I've just hit 15,000 miles with this, and I've actually had a couple people mention that they just picked up a 2020 1320. So I kind of wanted to go over some things that uh, I found out throughout uh, the 15,000 miles that I've uh, driven this car. So probably number one is when you get your car, go in and check your settings. The dealer will tell you nothing. They have no clue what they're doing. I've covered this in a previous video, but it is very important. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is go down here and press Super Track Pack. This is going to bring up this screen. It's going to show you what your settings are currently at, what modes you're in. Uh, for driving every day, this is my default setup. So I have the Engine and transmission on normal. Uh, paddle shifters are turned on just in case I get a little frisky. Traction control normal. And suspension in sport mode. Steering in sport mode. Now that is just my personal preference because uh, driving around in drag mode is fun. But I want to be able to have a difference when I push the button. Because if I drive in it every day, all day, it'll get old. It won't be as, uh, as entertaining as it really is once you pick one of these up. So once you have your current preferences set up, however you like to do them, um, first of all, the steering in sport is a little more, not twitchy, but it's definitely more responsive. Uh, if you put it in drag mode, you'll notice it's really stiff because it wants to keep the car straight. So let's go ahead and go default mode setup. And here's where you can choose uh, what suspension you want. Normal's a little bit softer. Sport gives you a, a little tighter ride, which I enjoy. Um, you're steering in sport. I like that. Like I said, it's it's a little more responsive. Normal, it almost feels a little slow when you're turning the wheel for me. And then I keep my engine in normal just because of, you know, gas mileage and such. I was driving an hour to work uh, back when I was working. So here is the current setup I have right now for daily driving. So if I go back drag mode this is where the fun happens this is where i put all this stuff to drag now if you're on the street and trying to run in drag mode i would highly suggest putting your traction control to normal or you will have an ice skate you will not go anywhere so let's go back there all right so that's the setup for that something else i did not know hit performance pages that little button i did not know that when i first bought the car i had seen people look at the screens and i'm like how do they do that so you just push that little performance page button and it will pull up all these goodies. So it has your timers, G-forces, dyno, it's got all of that fun stuff on it. Now I have the car off, so obviously you're not going to see anything. Uh, you can also take photos of a, the screenshot of, I don't have my storage set up, but you can take a screenshot of something if you are actually doing, you know, an, an, the engine dyno or G-forces, anything you really want to take a picture of, you can also Hit that if you put a thumb drive right in here. Put one either one or two, and that will allow you to store screenshots of your performance pages. So let me get back out of there. All right, so now you can see I have 15,000 miles on this thing. I, uh, come on there, there we go. I have 15,000 miles on it. And the only thing I've had to do is tires. I really have done uh, virtually nothing else. I've done your normal maintenance of uh, cleaning the air filter and then uh, doing your oil changes and such. The one thing I'm looking at at 15,000 miles, I wanted to see how my brakes are doing. Because as you know, when you race these things, you're gonna eat the brakes up. So my little tip for figuring out how your brakes are doing is to look at the level of your brake fluid. Let's see if I can get this in there. So if we look at the level of brake fluid, there was actually a line on the front of this from the factory right there. And I can see that it's about a quarter of an inch down. So there's 
really not down very far. If that goes down much farther, I'm really going to have to get in there and check to see um, what my brake pad life looks like. So just another tip. So when you get this car and you're driving it around, you're learning how to how this thing works and all the cool goodies it has, uh, remember, you're not going to be able to do anything until 500 miles. Once you've hit over 500 miles, it will unlock the drag mode uh, so you can use the paddle shifters, you can use all of the fun goodies that are on here, line lock, trans brake, all that stuff will kick in at 500 miles. When I first got this thing and I finally hit the 500 mile mark and I was driving it around, I uh, realized that when I, after I went to the track, I figured out how to do a trans brake launch. And once I did the trans brake launch, it actually loosened up the converter on this uh, because it does have a 2650 stall converter. And the first five to a thousand miles, you really won't notice it unless you go to the track or uh, Mexico and find yourself a place to do a trans brake launch. Once you do that trans brake launch, you will actually feel, it'll almost feel like the car's slipping before it takes off because it will loosen up that converter and you'll get used to driving it. Realize this is a drag car, so that stall converter is normal. It's going to feel like it doesn't want to go, and then it's going to kick in and go. But I noticed it uh, loosened it up once I did a trans brake launch. Something else I highly suggest for somebody who's just purchasing one of these cars, uh, get yourself into the Facebook groups. There are a bunch of Challenger 1320 owners groups. Um, I'm telling you, you can learn a lot of information. If you ever have questions, you can ask questions on there, and they will... Uh, get right back to you. Everybody has been really cool, very supportive. A lot of good people on there. So hop on Facebook and check that out. Always, you can uh, jump into my channel. I have a lot of a lot of uh, videos on different tips and tricks for these that you can find if you go down in my um, video content selection so you can figure out what type of content you want. You'll see the one that says tips and tricks. That's where I have every video on here that I've done. Oil changes, uh, jumping up under the car to see what everything is. Um, I have a bunch of different information on there. Uh, one of the other things, you'll notice this car when you do a cold start, it has active exhaust. So it will be loud, and then once it warms up, it will quiet down because there's actually a little valve under the exhaust, which once again, you can hop on my other tips and tricks videos to see more information on it. But there's a valve that'll open and shut to make it louder or quieter. Uh, when you're in drag mode and you're going down the strip, trust me, this thing is loud. I mean... For a stock vehicle, yes. But uh, there is no need to change the exhaust unless you really want to make your neighbors mad. The gas mileage indicator. There is a gas mileage indicator. Let me pop this back on. The range indicator up here. That range indicator. Uh, <laughs> don't count on it. It is... It is uh, all based on your driving habit, your driving style. It is, uh, I don't know, I, I don't really use it much. It is a pain in the butt because if you drive hard, it'll say, oh, you, had, you don't have that much mileage left and blah, blah, blah. And then you hit the highway and drive and you end up with that thing jumping up another 100 miles uh, of gas for your you know miles per, the tank that you have left. So do not, uh, do not pay attention to that. Uh, another suggestion. Probably once a month, I get in here, my fuse box, and I pull this fuse right here. It's a little 25 amp. I don't know if I can get enough light here to show you which one it is on the, oh, uh, let's see. Looks like it is R42. No, oh, that's relay. Up above would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Fuse 31. So you'll pull that and let it sit for, some people say a half hour, some people say 20 minutes, some people say overnight. But if you pull that and let it sit, I would say at least a half hour, um, and then you put it back in there, it will reset your, uh, your ECU per your driving habits. So you're, you know, if you have been driving around real slow and easy, the car is going to say, hey, this guy's driving easy, and it adjusts everything for that. So if you pull that fuse and put it back in, it will reset everything. It helps with that uh, mileage indicator too, the range mileage indicator. But I, the biggest thing I noticed when I redid that, the car seemed like it woke back up. Like it was starting to get lazy, and it woke back up. 
I also do that if I'm going to the track and I put in a fuel booster, uh, like a, a Torco or you know, Boostane or any of those things. If you're doing that, I highly suggest that you pull that fuse, let it sit for a while, pop it back in there, and it will relearn everything. Because if you've been running normal gas, it's you're going to put octane booster in there and not notice anything because it, it takes a while for it to adjust. Where if you pull that, it basically makes it want to adjust a little bit sooner. One other thing that I found was the spare tire. Where's our spare tire at? Well, we don't have a spare tire. What we get is this cool little pump. I always keep a tire gauge, just so you know. Here's our pump. This is where you will find your spare tire, quote unquote. That's all it is. It has a fix a flat in it and it's an air compressor. Some people love it. I personally didn't have luck with it. Uh, other than that, here's your stereo. There's also another fuse box back here, right down there. Um, you can watch a video I have on there if you ever end up with that black screen. A quick way to just reset it, it's not a permanent fix. Yes, I recommend taking it to the dealer, but people have had issues with that as well, so I never took mine back to the dealer. But I have an, a video on that if you ever get black screen on your stereo. If you found this video helpful whatsoever, please hit that subscribe button, click the bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. I'm going to be doing quite a bit more content here. Uh, moving into 2021 as I tried to replace some of my income with YouTube. Uh, feel free to check out all my other videos. I also go live on Wednesdays at uh, 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So be sure to join us for the live. Uh, a lot of cool stuff there. And if you're a YouTuber, please join that because I do uh, shout outs and all kinds of stuff on there as well. You can support me by hitting applause under the video or uh, coming on to the live. There's super chats. There's all kinds of stuff. I do also have a Teespring store that if you look at the banner on my channel, you can click that and go grab yourself a shirt. I appreciate every one of you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thank you.